So look at all that stuff floating around in the water column. Fish are going nuts for it. Coral's going nuts for it. What's going on everybody? Welcome back. So today is going to be a quick, short little video on some of the maintenance that I do to my tank. Uh, two things in specific is what I do daily, almost daily, to the rock and at least two to three times per week what I do to the sand bed. I used to uh, gravel vac essentially my sand bed, but I stopped doing that because I realized, you know, there's a lot of positive, you know, organisms that live in the sand bed that I don't want to suck out and dump down the drain. So I've since stopped doing gravel vacs. Maybe once every six months I'll do something like that, but normally I like to use a turkey baster and really uh, blast the sand with the turkey baster and just about every single day when I feed my fish about a half an hour later I like to blast the rocks now I want to show you guys the turkey baser that I use because I think it's important because um, I used to use a standard uh, you know what let's just take a look at it all right so this is the turkey baser that I used to use your standard you know Walmart dollar store turkey baser it works good. A lot of you guys that do use them when you squeeze them real hard, a little bit of water comes out the side. So you see what I did here? Just put a zip tie on it. You put a zip tie on it and then when you squeeze it, water doesn't shoot out the side. Now this is the one I used to use, like I said, and this only holds one ounce. Now I like to use, the new one that I've been using is actually made by Good Cook. This one holds two ounces. You can see the difference, right? One is definitely longer, one is wider, and it holds twice the amount. And the ball is actually softer, so when you suck the water in and out, it works really fast. And again, you know, put a zip tie on. I'd say maybe once every two months, what I will do is I'll snip the zip tie off and scrub the inside of here with a toothbrush because you can get nasty stuff in there. This is the same turkey baster I use to feed the fish, so you gotta keep it clean. And when you do buy this, um, you know, you could probably get it online, eBay, Amazon, whatever. But it's the Good Cook 2-ounce turkey baster. It does come with a really cool cleaning brush that just fits in here and goes all the way in. And you can scrub it and keep it clean. I think that's important, keeping it clean. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys how I clean my rock. And we'll take a look at actually everything that comes off the rock. And then I also want to show you how I use the turkey baster to um, hit the sand bed. You know, some people say, oh, just a light sift. I do mine a little differently, and what usually happens is the water column will get full of just cloudy, you know, detritus and just junk in the water, and I would think maybe an hour later, my water is crystal clear. So let's take a look at what comes off the rocks, and then we'll take a look at the sand bed. Now, when you have the turkey baser in, you know, obviously fill it with water, get as much air of it out as you can, and don't be don't be shy don't be gentle and slightly you know look you really get them look at all the stuff that's that's coming off the the zoanthids and everything that's just spraying off you see all that stuff floating in the air I will blast everything and you know it irritates the corals but only for like a second you know in the wild you know in the ocean some of these corals they will get hit by big huge waves or big currents underneath, you know, a big fish could swim by and really irritate it. So don't be shy on hitting it as hard as you can, you know, you don't want to put the turkey baster right up against it and blast it, but go all different angles. It's super important to do this. Really, really keeps the tank clean. You can see all the stuff floating in the water. Now, I did this two days ago. I wanted to get it a little bit, look at all that stuff just floating around. I don't have a huge bio load of fish. So you can, you know, you see what can build up. Let's take a look down here. I don't know if you guys can see, yeah, look at all that stuff. That's not sand. That's stuff coming off the rocks. And you know, Continue the whole tank, as much of the rock work as you can. Now the cool thing is, is some of this stuff that's floating around, the corals will actually eat. The corals will consume it, and it's actually good for them. 
they won't eat the bad stuff. If they do, they'll spit it out, trust me. Again, hit as many areas as you can. Don't worry about, you know, look, you see, you, you can spray the um, SPS, no problem. You don't want to blast them, you know. The polyps will retract, and that's fine. They'll open up in a couple of minutes. But look, look at all this junk floating around. Let's take a look at it from the side. Just keep spraying it. You know, you don't have to get every single nook and cranny all the same day. If you're going to do this daily, it's definitely good because, you know, you can do one side of the tank one day, one side of the tank the other, but it works really well. I found that my LPS actually enjoy this a lot. And this will also help, you know, from that those detritus build up on certain parts of the rock so you don't get that nasty algae. So, look at all that stuff floating around in the water column. Fish are going nuts for it. Coral's going nuts for it. Eventually, it will go down the overflow and into my sump socks. Now, I want to show you guys how um, well I hit the sand bed. Okay, now luckily the way I designed my rocks, I'm actually able to get into all these crazy crevices. But what I want to show you is, is what I do is I'll suck the sand in and I'll really blast it. I'm using the Carib Sea Fiji Pink that I rinsed out real good so you can see the sand just stays put. It might float up a little bit, but not that much. You can see the Tiger Conch right here. He's getting a little mad because he was just eating. But I really blast everything. Let me get him out of there. There you go, buddy. I've had him for about three years now. So, really, really, really hit it hard. Don't worry about the way the sand looks. The, um, you know, my, my tiger conch right here and the saria snails, they'll level it out the next day. But just really blast it. Get all that gunk out of the sand and get it up into the water column so that your filtration can clean it. And even the stuff that's on the, the sand bed that you don't want to disturb, look, what you do, you just suck it in a little bit, go like that, go like that, really helps. This is like a, a, a dead spot in my tank right here, and you'll, you'll see a lot of stuff floating, but I do the sand bed maybe twice a week, maybe three times a week, but I usually don't do it more than three times most likely twice a week. I'll do it the day of a water change, usually about uh, right before, you know, maybe five minutes before the water change. And then the next day after I do this little sand sifting, I will change my sump socks, my sump socks out. Um, either that night, depending on what time I do it, or the next morning. I'll go over here. See this little little dirty spot I guess you could call it. It's not really dirty, it's just... Don't worry about the Nasaria snails, they'll find their way out. Now you see I got some sand on this A-can, so I'll lightly dust it. Love. That's Bob right there. He's chilling. So, and you know, you can get some... get the sand off the edges that you just hit. And that's it. I think it's very important to clean your rock works as often as possible and definitely important to sand sift with the turkey baster on your sand bed at least once a week. Definitely at least once a week. Get all that junk out of the sand bed, get it into the water column and get it down into your filtration, into your sump socks, into your filters into your sponges, whatever it is that's cleaning, get it out of there. And all this stuff too, if you have a refugium, the refugium will appreciate all this stuff going down there. So that's it. Let this tank settle. Let the, Look, the zoas are already opened and I just blast the heck out of them. So that's it guys. I hope this was a helpful little tip and I hope you guys are doing the same thing. Get that rock work cleaned, get that sand bed cleaned, get all that stuff into the water column, get it down your overflow and into your filtration. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, I just want to thank you guys again for stopping by. If you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you're here, hit that little crab icon to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell for any future videos or updates. And in case you haven't seen these two videos, you might want to click on one and check it out. Again, thanks for stopping by.